Welcome to the, the Low Carb, Carb Athlete Podcast, Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey, are you an aging athlete? Are you over 40 and struggling to get your desired results? I understand your frustrations. If you're like me, you're trying to get your running back or your cycling back or whatever sport you love to do and you just can't figure out what's missing in your performance gains. How is your training and fueling program working for you? That's what I do. I personalize your nutrition and health program for you based on a bunch of different things. We collect data, collect clues from nutritional therapy assessment, from a food log with symptoms. Look at your genetics. If you've done something as DNA fit, look at blood chemistry panels. Let's look at functional lab tests as a vibrant wellness wheat zoomer to test if you have leaky gut and sensitivity to wheat, peptides and foods. Look at food sensitivity labs and Dutch tests. Look at your hormones. So we look at all these hidden internal sources of chronic stress that may be impacting your ability to burn fat, improve performance and longevity. So if you want to talk about how we can personalize your fueling, training, and performance plan, let me know. Set up a discovery call. Head to my website, debbiepotts.net, and reach out. Set up a call, and we can chat about how I can help you be the best version of yourself. So you can stop blaming the aging process and instead change your mindset that you're embracing the change that we train differently in our 40s and up versus what you did when you're 20, 30-year-old. We need to adjust how we eat, when we eat, why and how, but also match our nutrition with our exercise program and add some more health building lifestyle habits into our day. I call this all the holistic method, comprehensive coaching program, where I work on individualizing clients, nutrition, exercise, stress reduction, sleep, movement, time outside, digestion and gut health, hydration, and my favorite, happiness, play, and laughter. So if you want to know more how you can be your best self, live your best life, and perform your best, head to debbiepotts.net, schedule a discovery call with me, and we can get started on your new health-building journey. You can be that amazing athlete and stop blaming the aging process. Hey, it's Debbie Potts, and I'm doing another episode of Real Thoughts with Debbie Potts on a Friday for you as I record this from the week review here in North San Diego in Debbie's world. What have I been working on? Well, when I was listening to the podcast with Dr. Gabrielle Lyon interviewing Dr. Stacy Sims, I listened to that about three times and got my podcast assistant to write me some show notes. <laughs> so I have the cliff note version that I will put into a blog on debbiepotts.net website. The other part made me curious is listening to Dr. or Huberman Labs podcast with Dr. Andy Gappin. They have a whole series and I can't wait for their fueling to come out for the endurance athlete. But if you listen to their recent episode on fueling the athlete, or not feeling, training the endurance athlete, I need to go back and listen to that again and again and write some notes because they are so freaking long, you can't remember what they said. So I'd like the Cliff Notes version for that as well. So what that brought me to is curiosity I've had for a while now on fueling, training and fueling the endurance athlete and then the female athlete. Everyone, and I know a lot of people in our Keto Endurance Facebook group page that Stephanie Holbrook and I help uh, run. I also listen to other podcasts and listen to my own listener questions. We get so fixated on low carb means zero carb and fasted exercise that... I've said this before, but I think we get to a point that 
we get narrow minded. We're all in or all out, or we're one way eating just fat. And then we forget about protein or we came from the standard American diet and we're just eating whatever we want. And then people are focusing on protein now. And, but what about carbs? People think they're evil. We say, you know, not to have them train fasted, but what if they're nutrient dense nature's foods as Dr. Mindy Pills talks about, and I'm finishing her book, Fasting Like a Girl, and listening to Dr. Stacy Sims. I have her program, Menopause 2.0, to do as a coach. But where do carbs fit in? When are they necessary? Or are they necessary? I know a lot of friends that are strict carnivores, and they say, Carbs are not essential. There's essential amino acids and they are essential fatty acids, but carbs are not necessary because you can get glycogen from breaking down protein and fat, gluconeogenesis, breaking down, making new sugar. Now, I'm looking at S Fuels train program and using their freeze formula. If you are doing a more Tempo, anaerobic, threshold, VO2 max workout, anaerobic capacity, upper tempo, that 20% of the time your training should be some interval training. 80% of your time as an endurance athlete, we should be doing more that zone two and some low tempo Ironman intensity pace for triathletes and marathoners. So here's my thought. If you can be doing fasted exercise and not eat any carbohydrates during the workout, if it is low heart rate, that's great. If you feel like your performance is good. But what if you are doing some anaerobic pieces as hill repeats or the 30 second short intensity bursts? What if you're doing kind of that high intensity interval training that we're supposed to do 20% of our time? during the week, especially as we age, we tend to lose speed and power. So what do we do? We need to eat more protein, spread that out throughout the day, three, four hours, and get that 30, 50 grams of protein on top of adding more strength training in per week. And then timing our carbs if we want to improve performance in and around those higher intensity workout sessions. I Personally, I don't like to eat before workouts if I get up in the morning or I do get up in the morning and go work out. Now, my thought for my own performance is based on kind of some things Dr. Andy Gappin said on the interview with Huberman Lab show that what if we are kind of lacking that power? What if you're lacking speed? What if you are doing all this fasted workouts without eating carbohydrates? Maybe you have some coffee and some MCT oil and some heavy cream. Maybe you put some collagen peptides in there. But what if you are still not getting faster? You do not have that ability to go hard. That is when you need to question what is your purpose? What is the purpose of that workout? What are your intentions? Are you trying to get faster? Are you trying to train for a race? Are you trying to improve your performance in life? Like myself, I don't really have a race I'm training for. I just want to get stronger and faster and get my speed back. Granted, I've got some physical therapy to do on activating my muscles and my glutes and quads that seem to have fallen asleep and I have glute amnesia. <laughs> so my running power is not very good, but I'm working on it. Okay, so what if you are working out in the morning and, for example, my day on Wednesdays, I'm doing uh, a lifting, kind of more mobility drills and more like five repetition type of strength training for upper body. And then I take spin class at 6.15 a.m. to 7.05 and it's based on short to higher intensity interval training of that one to four minute pieces, or I'm trying to focus on just going 30 seconds. What if you're doing that in the morning? If you don't have some days, I felt like I have zero 
power. I don't have any energy. So I need to not just do what I say, the, the insanity, do the same thing over and over again, expect different results. I should experiment with timing my fueling in and around that workout to improve my performance. If I'm trying to hit higher speeds, higher power output, if I'm trying to lift heavier weights, or I'm trying to do more a plyometric type of workout, which I'm not able to do with my rehab area of opportunity I'm working on. What if you are slacking, you just can't get up and go. That's what I think Dr. Andy Gappin was talking about is that's when you need to add some carbs with some protein pre-workout and what Dr. Stacy Sims talks about for female athlete. Men maybe can do more fasted workout, but everyone, I think if you're doing more of an anaerobic workout, maybe, maybe you can be even faster, stronger, and hit more po higher power outputs as we're looking at our power meter on their bikes in the spin class I'm doing by adding in some fuel. I know it's hard if you've been stubborn like me, like, oh, I'm fasted, I don't need to do anything. Well, I've been doing this stuff for a long time and you have to ask yourself, am I getting faster? Am I increasing my power output? Am I getting my splits, improving running, biking, whatever sport? If you are not, then you may want to experiment with fueling. But of course, you always need to look at your stress management, your stress in your external life, and these hidden internal stressors because stress impacts all efforts. Maybe you need to optimize your sleep. Are you burning the candle at both ends and doing what I used to do, just get up and go at four in the morning and I wouldn't stop until I hit the pillow at night at nine o'clock and I'd get up and do the same crazy schedule again. So you need to sometimes look at your life. I call it the holistic method when I coach people. It's nutrition and exercise, but sleep, stress management, movement throughout the day, your mobility, how's your form, your alignment, posture, breathing exercises. Look at digestion, how you're eating. I just saw someone eating breakfast when I was working at the club and they were inhaling their food. They're taking another bite before I even finished take chewing his eggs that he was eating, just healthy eggs and some fruit. Well, he was eating in a rush sense. He's probably sympathetic, not properly digesting food. So digestion and gut health are super essential to your performance and being able to break down and get the nutrients from your food so you can use it as fuel. And then, of course, hydration with minerals. I add LMNT unsweetened to my water throughout the day. If not, I put Redmond sea salt in all of our water bottles that I put back in the fridge. I'm having my minerals. We want to keep them balanced. If you listen to my podcast with Ryan Monahan and with Barton of Upgraded Formulas, my hair tissue mineral analysis was really off balance. And I think everyone that gets tested, <laughs> less you, you don't know what you don't know, and your minerals could be totally out of whack too. So with that, I took some notes of what Stacey Sims was saying for women. So for women to adapt to the feeling stress at hand, we want to feel in and around training. This will help us increase energy, cognition, hit those heavy loads and improve recovery. And we want to avoid doing our workouts fasted because men can, because they're a little bit better at tapping into that fatty acid fuel source when they are fasted. Women, we don't need to. We already are fat adapted naturally with our higher estrogen and progesterone levels. Interesting. So women, we have to fuel for the stress at hand and we want to give the body fuel to hit the higher intensities to go hard when we need to go hard. If you need to lose weight, she talks about reduce your meal calorie intake in the evening away from training but focus on improving your performance and your output by giving yourself some fuel. And that doesn't mean having a huge meal and eating a ton. It's just a little bit of calories, free workout fuel, say 100 calories to 150 calories to access glucose when training harder. This helps for women drop your cortisol levels and gives you the fuel need to hit those heavy loads so you can train harder and improve recovery. So Stacy Sims says pre-strength workouts 15 to 20 grams of protein. 
If you're doing a cardio workout, you can add 15 to 20 grams of protein plus 30 grams of carbs. I'm not going to eat a meal, so what can you do? So that's when I look at s fuels. Then also post-workout recovery, women want to eat right after workout where men can wait up to three hours and then add in that fuel. But women, that 40 gram protein intake after workout, which I brought mine, I didn't drink any yet, but I packed my water bottle, shaker bottle with some whey protein from Keon or Paleo Valley or Equip. I get theirs and kind of rotate it, shake it up and have that post-workout. This is a challenge for me. I know for a lot of you as well is that you know, we work out, you can do it fasted, you're fine. Your workout may kind of suck, but you just, you're fine. It's good enough. But what if it could be better? And then we go shower, get ready. And I go to work and take calls, say 8, 830, I start work and I haven't eaten yet. So yeah, woohoo! I'm fat adapted, but am I raising stress in my body by not giving it what it needs? Am I not recovering adding in that protein to help repair my muscles and replace the glycogen stores I just used. Because when I run, I'm not burning just fat. I'm definitely burning carbohydrates. So I need to add a fuel. When I did that spin class on Wednesday, I am doing high or output and I need to replace that. Plus, for me, I do swim class, master swim, three to four days a week at 11.45 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then I go back to work, and this is why I work weekends, because I like to go swimming. Now, how do you fuel for that? So if I go work out in the morning, I'm done at 7.30, but then I'm going to work out again, it's really important for me to find time in the right macro ratio to get fuel in so I can go swimming and have the speed I need to go swimming when we do speed work. So... I noticed yesterday I went swimming and I didn't eat enough carbs. I just had a grass fed burger that we had left over from the day before with bacon and one egg and some cheese. I ate that at nine in the morning. I went swimming at 1145. I'm like, oh, I don't have any gas. I can't do sprint works that we're supposed to do these 50 meters fast times six. I didn't have it. Maybe it's because I, I do need a little more carbohydrate. And that doesn't mean crap. It just means maybe I could have added some sliced russet potatoes cooked with butter with that burger and egg. So I don't mean low carb athlete doesn't mean zero carb. It just is saying maybe you need to just as Dr. Andy Gappin's talking about what Dr. Stacy Sims talks about for the females that you may improve your performance if you're interested in getting faster and stronger and more powerful we may need some good quality nature's carbs as root vegetables or uh, something as s fuels so go back to s fuels i looked up their product they have s fuels train when you're going longer and going that more zone two low heart rate where you're burning mostly fat that is an option Especially if you're fat adapted, you know, you can do that. If you're not, it's probably not going to be enough energy for you. So if we are trying to fuel around before and after our workout, S fuels race after you're doing, they suggest add that in partway through the workout. But what if you're doing more of a hit training than going for a two hour bike ride? How do we fuel that in? So in race dosing, the S Fuels train handout they have talks about how to fuel for half in a full and an ultra marathon or Olympic distance triathlon, an Ironman 70.3. So I have some suggestions on there. Now, the train formula is just 50 calories per one scoop. So it's four grams of fat, sodium 240 milligrams, one gram of carbs, three grams of protein. So it's just to help you have the steady flow of energy when you are doing a low heart rate training. So it has some calcium and potassium and L-glutamine to support your gut. The ingredients are coconut oil, collagen peptides, natural flavors, Himalayan rock salt, citric acid, malic acid, monk fruit extract. That's in the train. But what if you are going harder 
but maybe it's just an hour workout and you can tell you're just kind of lacking that extra get up and go. Well, their race formula has highly branched cyclic dextrin, coconut oil, collagen peptides from beef, natural flavors, which I have to ask what that means because natural flavors doesn't, uh, depends on the flavor, coconut lime, strawberry lemonade, cherry, fruit punch, but natural flavors is another topic because it doesn't really say what that means. Himalayan rock salt, citric acid, turmeric powder for color, beetroot powder for color, monk fruit extract. So if you have a scoop of race plus S fuels, you'll get 110 calories and 15 grams of carbs. So if you do that before a workout that you're going to do more of a high intensity workout, like the bike class, or when I do Tory Pines Hill repeats, or I do Fletcher Cove to Cardiff, Encinitas area. Um, if you know Swami's Beach, we do our dawn patrol run intervals up the coast one day a week, and then another day I do hill repeats. So I get two days of intervals on the running. Now, what would you do if Stacey Sims is saying for females, they need a little carbs, their performance will improve if they have that 15 to 20 grams of protein with 30 grams of carbs. But how do I do that if I don't want to eat something? Well, I can get my coffee. I can put some Laird's collagen creamer in there, and that has some of the mushroom adaptogens, benefits from that, the cordyceps, the lion's mane, and reishi. And then it has some MCT oil in it. I could add protein. You know, what does that count? Collagen peptides are different than having a whey protein if you just listen to my other podcast on protein. So, what type of protein do we need pre workout? I have to look at Stacy's program, see if we go into that. But the race plus one scoop is 15 grams of carbs. So if I need to have 30 grams, I need two scoops of that. So is that going to be too sweet? If that's going to be too much for me, do I just have it sip on it on my way to the workout in between lifting weights or what? So I think that's where we need to experiment. I will talk to Layton from S fuels to learn more. That's something to think about. How is it best for you to fuel for high intensity training and racing? So it allows for metabolic flexibility. It spares muscle glycogen and it's a water-like consistency and it helps with the gut health with your glutamine. Because I know I test lab tests, GI tests on clients and everyone's got dysbiosis. So just assume you have leaky gut and dysbiosis and you need to do gut repair protocol. Okay, so that's S Fields Plus. And then they talk about, you know, having that to maximize your carbohydrate and your fat fuel oxidation for optimal stable energy. You can lower your risk of bonking and gut distress during high intensity racing and threshold training sessions. So they have a video on S Fields, how to get started with S Fields Train and S Fuel Race products. And then after workout, then you would add in some protein. So S Fuels has some protein powder you can do. I think they have some really good research behind their products. So I'm all big on S Fuels and they're into the endurance world. So they're just exactly what we talk about here on carb timing, strategic carb timing. So you want to increase your high intensity threshold workouts, hit your high intensity workouts with force, feeling satisfied and fuel without sugar spike. You can take the S Fuels Life Bar an hour before your workout, and then you can optimize your recovery post aerobic workout. You can add in 30 minutes afterwards, some of their recovery microfiber muscle and gut repair damage from uh, the long endurance workouts, you want to get some protein and resistant starches in there. The resistant starches are prebiotics. So think probiotics are getting more good bacteria in your gut. We want more diversity. And then prebiotics are like fertilizer for your garden. So they're giving you more. And then there's polyphenols. So when we look at what carbs to use, think berries, the low glycemic kind. You know, you can do avocado, Peppers are on here, tomatoes, mushrooms, cucumbers, but also like cilantro, herbs are good. 
but you want to get more of the higher fiber kind. I rather clients look at which carbs to use that are nutrient dense that are going to have purpose. So they're going to support liver detox pathways one and two. So having more crucifix, cruciferous, I can never say the word, vegetables like cauliflower, broccoli, and then having more root vegetables that if you are more staying away from above ground vegetables because of the lectins, phytates, oxalates, FODMAPs, you know, all this other stuff, resistant starches, having the cooked and cooled potatoes, russet potatoes, sweet potatoes, more of the root vegetables might be something. I've also been enjoying carrots that kind of have even dirt on them. They're colored from just locally grown from the farmer's market. It's all something else I like. So low intensity fuel, yeah, you can get away with just having water, maybe some calories in your coffee. But for women, you may perform even better with a little bit of calories and men can get away with it. Women, we might be putting more stress on our body. And then once you alert that kisspeptin hormone, then we have a uh, hormone imbalance. So no, I've been doing this a long time. I was doing the low carb fasting athlete world forever racing. And then I still am, but I, I do know I was fasting too much because, well, my thyroid is really low and my cortisol level is really low. And my HTMI, I'm a calcium shell, slow oxidizer, and signs of sluggish thyroid and cortisol well as well. So you want to make sure you're testing and not guessing and figuring out what's the best fuel. So check out S Fuels. You can save with our discount code, low carb athlete. Race and competition, high intensity training. I'll put the links in the show notes for their manual of how to figure out how to fuel your best as an endurance athlete. So they have great information for you. So let me know your questions and remember experiment. If you are trying to get faster, improve your power on the bike, improve your run splits and your speed workouts. When you do track once a week or you're doing hill repeats once a week, we need to look at what fueling might be beneficial for you as an individual and not freak out of carbs. We're just saying, you know, stay away from the crap and the processed foods and the wheat and vegetable oils. Eat real food. Look at Dr. Mindy Pels talks about eat foods that feed your microbiome, eat foods that support your hormones and more. And also make sure you're lifting weights. You know, all this chronic cardio stuff is catabolic, breaking you down with the more cortisol is released. So we want to balance our breaking down with building up by adding in more protein into our diet, 30, 50 grams per meal spread out throughout the day. That's why it's impossible to hit your protein goals if you are doing one meal a day and just fasting too much. And this is what I was doing and now I realize, you know, I'm, I want to get faster, stronger and leaner. And I can't do that with just eating one meal a day. And now that I'm working on my calcium shell protocol with the right ingredients, vitamin and minerals to improve my thyroid health, I know I'm starting to feel more hungry. It's funny. I usually don't feel hungry at all in the morning and I'm like, oh, my stomach's kind of growling. I feel like I could eat something. So Laird Superfoods has a bar with adaptogen mushrooms in it and I'll even it's plant protein, but I'll have like half of one and just experiment with that. So experiment N equals one. You are different from everyone else. Men are different than women, but then each of us is different from each other. So if you are trying to improve your performance, Try to time some fueling in and around the workout so you can still hit those numbers and get faster and leaner and then figure out the rest time keeping your carbs down and getting more of that nutrient dense food and getting the protein and healthy fats. So you have to earn your carbs. The other people that we keep hearing about, they are not exercising like we are. I'm exercising two, three times a day with my swim run or bike and lifting and then i do walking and yoga so we are active people we're high charging individuals so we need to make sure we listen to our own bodies and experiment with our own fueling plan because a lot of us that are coming to me especially my clients are malnourished we're in that low energy availability you might think you're fine but you could do even better you want to be thriving 
and as I said, getting faster, not struggling with fatigue and slow recovery and all the digestion issues. So that is my thought for today. Hopefully that gives you some ideas. So check out S Fuels, go longer and use our code low carb athletes, support the podcast and you should get a discount there. Also Keon, low carb athlete, Keon has 20% off sale. You can look at that for your Keon essential aminos before and after is my other experiment eating proteins a little hard before workout, but I can take essential aminos or if you don't mind stevia, you can put it in a drink mix and then post workout having that. So trying to hit 10, 15 grams of protein before workout and getting that 40 gram in a meal that might be post workout shake with two scoops of Paleo Valley, Keon, or Equip, or those are my favorites of getting just good quality grass fed protein. So let me know your questions. If you want to dive in more, I have three coaching packages and I'm going to do a spring special for the listeners. So reach out, debbiepotts.net, schedule discovery call, and find out how you can save 20%. All right, chat soon. Go figure out how to feel trained to perform your best as an athlete, endurance athlete, and aging athlete. Thanks for listening to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at debbiepotts.net. You can help us to continue to grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.